This is the fourth video on Introduction to Modelling. Here we're going to consider resistors in parallel. Now some assumptions. We're going to assume that students are familiar with Kirchhoff's voltage law. In fact, that was summarised in the first video in this series. We're also going to assume that students know Kirchhoff's current law. In simple terms, this says the sum of the currents into a node must be zero, because otherwise charge would have to be accumulating, which implies there's a capacitor or something else there, which we're going to discount. This video considers only resistors in parallel with a fixed input voltage supply. So we're not going to consider other components and we're not going to consider variable voltage. And by parallel, we're going to emphasize here that we mean each loop shares the same voltage difference, the same voltage supply. Some background then, just to remind students, this is what we did in video one. If we have a simple electrical circuit with a supply voltage, here it is V, and a current I going around the loop, and a single resistor R1, then the model for this is given as V equals I times R1. What happens then if I have two resistors in parallel, as shown here? You'll notice they both have the same supply voltage V, so I could use Kirchhoff's voltage law um, going through resistor R1 or going through resistor R2, and it would demonstrate clearly I've got the same voltage across both resistances. What about Kirchhoff's current law then? What does that tell me? Well, first I need to mark the currents. So we've got I1 here going through resistor R1, I2 here going through resistor R2, and we've got I here. Now clearly, if I take, for instance, this node here, I must have I equals I1 plus I2. <laughs> because I've got I1 coming in here, and I've got I2 coming in here, and I coming out. So there's my application of Kirchhoff's current law. Next, I can ask myself, well, do I know what I1 is or I2? Well, I can use the simple rule for a resistor. I know the voltage across the resistor is V, and therefore I can get I1 equals V over R1, and I2 equals V over R2. And if I just remember what I had down below, I always had I equals I1 plus I2. Then you'll see <coughs> the next step. I can take this I1 and put it in here, and take this I2 and put it in here. And what I will get is I equals V over R1 plus V over R2. So that will be an equation which models this parallel circuit. Let's see if we can join together what we've actually got here and put some um, useful insight into it. So I'm just annotating my diagram first so I can see the I1, I2 and I. First of all, let's look at the current. You'll notice the current is actually the sum of I1 plus I2. So it's the current through resistor 1 plus the current through resistor 2. So in other words, the total current I is bigger than the current you would get if you just had resistor 1, or the current you would get if you just had resistor 2. So current flow has increased. I can also, that's what I've done with this step here and then this step here, is I can rearrange the equation to write it in the form V equals I into RT. And you'll see in brackets here, I've got an effective expression for RT. So the effective resistance of this parallel circuit is 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So what are the key insights? The currents add, and so the overall current is increased. I've got more current with a parallel circuit than I would if I just had R1 on its own or R2 on its own. And that's clear because I've done I equals I1 plus I2. What does this mean? If the current has increased, then that means that RT must be less than R1 and RT must be also less than R2. So the overall resistance of the circuit is less than if I had just R1 or R2 on their own. So 
just to summarize the two expressions together, if I had a single resistor, I've got expressions like this, V equals I times R1. If I've got two resistors in parallel, you get this expression here, and it really does look a little bit messy. And you just need to get used to that, that you get this funny term 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. If I look at the current, it's a bit easier. I can see original current V over R1. If I have parallel paths, I can just add the current from each parallel path. And you may find that that lower form is somewhat easier to work with. And the key summary is when you have two resistors in parallel, the overall resistance to current flow decreases and the overall current increases. What happens then if I have lots of resistors in parallel with the same voltage supply V and a total current I. Now, again, I can use Kirchhoff's current law to determine an equation representing the circuit. So here it is. You can see I've got V over R1, which is I1, V over R2, which is I2, V over R3, which is I3, and so on, all the way up to IN. So I can just add all the currents to all these parallel loops, and that gives me the total current I. Alternatively, I could write it in the standard form of V equals I times RT, and you'll see in this brackets here, I've got essentially what gives us RT. And it has this <coughs> standard expression you'll get used to, 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, and so on. So some conclusions. If you have resistances in parallel, the overall current is the sum of the currents through each of those resistances. And therefore, the overall current is greater than the individual current through any of those individual resistances. As a consequence, the overall resistance must be less than any of the individual resistances. And the formula that you might want to remember is the effective loop resistance is given by this formula, RT equals 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, and so on. And that's a classic form that you'll get used to, and it's worth remembering.